not getting BLG and E-Star rolling over here. We got the best of BLG to start things off. E-Star fought back. And I know this just kind of leads us to game three, but I'll say one thing. Both E-Star and BLG, the way this split has gone so far, these two teams should be near the top, but it's only E-Star holding that top position. The newbies coming into 2020 spring, the only new team in the LPL. If they can beat BLG here, that's another top team off their list. That's a six and one start here in week number three. BLG can change all that here. They can end their losing streaks. What do you call it? A spree. Intro's in the toilet. Both words were correct. The curse is there for BLG. They need to end it now. Yeah, no early game shenanigans coming out this time. Uh, what a shame. BLG do actually have a very strong level one between Karma and Olaf. But looks like, again, we know BLG is a slow team. They don't like a lot of blood. They don't like a lot of action. They, they did last game. They, <laughs> true, but they want, <laughs> they, want stability, they want stability, right? They want to yep. get to mid game knowing, like, hey, you have two kills, I have two kills. Let's see who, who has the better mid late game team fight. I do always start my games with runes because I think it's the most important thing to look at who's kind of taking what. This game, you look at Wink once again. Now, in the LPL in the past week or so, we've gone between a lot of Conqueror Ezreals and a lot of Lethal Tempo Ezreals, right? We have. Have we? Yes. We've seen a lot of Conqueror Ezreals in LPL. Well, we see a lot of Lethal Tempo Ezreals worldwide. But and we did see him in LCK. I think Deft was the last person to kind of take it before. Yep. And again, Lethal Tempo is a lot more of a scaling rune. It does come online in the late game where you are getting that like 120% attack speed for six, th six to nine seconds. Right. Conquer a lot more of an early game rune. LPL is typically the early game league. That's why I don't think we see a lot of e uh, Lethal Tempo on Ezreal. Sure. But again, with this draft from E-Star, you are opting into more of a late game setup. Also, Wink does have Cleanse in this lane as well as a uh, level one on both. Xenoblade doesn't connect here from Shinmo as they just walk away. Also makes it super easy to farm here, as you can see. There's no need for the Alacrity. Got the Bloodline there in the Legends tree and a bit of cooldown reduction here in the secondary. Yeah, we should be seeing a slower early game. I want to see what BLG can do with the pressure from mid lane with yep. Karma, who should be able to push in the Corky. And you already have this aggressive Olaf pick. Can you find these duels with Wei in the jungle? Can you set up something with your bot side pressure from Shinmo? That's what we need to see. Well, Meteor's on his red right now. While meanwhile, Wei went from red all the way to blue and then circled up. So the pathing here for Wei seems to be leading him to that top lane GP. Yeah, we w if he ends up ganking top lane, this is something that is extremely new for E-Stars. We saw them do it one game where I remember Xiaobai was on the poppy and they gave him a lot of attention. Yep. But other than that one game, it's not something we usually see. BLG looking for this invade on bot side like we just talked about, but good clear coming in from Wei, making sure he has no camps available for the Olaf to steal. I was going to say, that's a bit of waste of time here for Media. The only thing he's going to get is this scuttle crab towards the bottom side. But is this really an optimal dive when you're going up against an Ezreal or Nautilus? It doesn't seem like there's a lot of options here if Meteor wants to expand on his level 4 star. No, if you're BLG, you really don't have any early game ganking options in the side lanes, in my opinion. You're you're mostly looking for this, this 2v2 mid and jungle, catching out the Olaf, having the support from the Karma, and then translating that to a side lane. You can maybe look for a cheeky play oh. bot lane, but... That's the other thing with Leona. You follow all the way through him for Shinmo. The Ignite comes through. Wink doesn't have a lot of mana, oh. but he does have lethal tempo. Ignite on the other side over to Xiao Si. Jin Xiao does have the piercing arrow available in about three seconds. But both bottom laners, though, look who snuck in the bottom side. Meteor's here. I was going to say, BLG can look for a cheeky play through bot lane if you can get E-Star to look for an engage onto you and then counter, not really counter gank, right, but surprise with the Olaf pick. We do see BL gone. BLG coming out kind of awkwardly in that exchange where we talked about they are not a very strong laning bot lane. They did have to blow two summoners, Shaosi only using the Ignite. So you feel pretty good on the side of E-Star. Yeah, you really do. After what was looking pretty scary here. Uh, Shinmo, I just love the interaction when an Ezreal Arc Arcane shifts away. Zenithblade follows all the way. Sometimes a blessing, sometimes a curse. And you can see how that one went for them. So after that, bottom lane looks like it's resetting a little bit. But way on the bottom side this time around. Looking for the reset in Grom. But BLG smartly just backing away. Yep, and we saw King in earlier push that wave into tower. The bounce back just came and... 
You're about a wave behind in farm. Again, your GP, you're scaling up for late game. It's not a big deal. <laughs> this is just uh, a bit of cat and mouse through the brush, I think. Almost level six towards that top lane. It's going to be really interesting when we said BLG are not a team who plays around bot side, yeah. but your whole setup is for bot side with the cannon barrage and the chains of corruption coming out from Boris. But you did mention mid, and now, surprise, surprise, here's Meteor, an instant flash here from Wei. Undertow's going to connect once again, but through the wave, I think Wei is okay. Kryon didn't burn a summoner, but he gets burnt out. Because now supports want to join in the party. Yeah, and this is what I like to see. Very expected from Shaozi. He's been one of our best roaming supports in the LPL. Good to see Shinwell finally getting... Connects. Okay. Does connect, but Shaozi gets away pretty fine. I like you complimenting Shaozi. It could have gone pretty wrong, but uh, ends up getting out in the end. I just like that Shaozi is always there. He, yeah. he He's constantly looking for these roams, constantly hovering for his team. To where, again, Shinmo hasn't always provided that for BLG, even when he should. It's on the side of the bottom lane for Shinmo, a lot of the time in pretty dangerous situations. Now, speak of the devil, way just flexing up here. King and has the ult available. Used on the wave, Xiaobai with Dominus as well. Wei does not have kick, but Kingen flashes away immediately. Wei is tanking turret. Sonic wave, resonating strike will come through, and wow. Flash is used, but first blood is a first blood. It looked like E-Star misplayed it, and Kingen really well with the cannon brush, but the Sonic Wave connecting was the sole decider in that dive working out. Really strong mechanical play coming out from Wei. The last shot doesn't connect. It was Wei who got down to a, a slimmer of health, and Kingen now has to burn the TP to get back into this lane to catch the remnants of this last wave. And you can see it's a chain effect here for E-Star's jungler. After getting that, heads towards the enemy blue and is going to steal this right away from Meteor as Meteor was spotted on the bottom side doing Dragon. Yep, BLG were able to get a trade out of that. We did talk about BLG is constantly making good decisions with these trades. But going back to this dive, using the Cannon Barrage, flashes away, just a little bit unlucky with that Sonic Wave hitting yeah. right as he got to his minion wave, but still pretty clean coming out from E-Star on the back end of that That play. hit his pinky toe as it the minion really wave did. came in. So that was really nice from Wei uh, at the end of the day against my expectations. But now Renekton has first blood. We saw what Kingen was able to do in game two with first blood, and it wasn't really too much. But Xiaobai, very different champion, building towards Blade of the Room King once again here on the Renekton. And now, let's see what this lane state amounts to. We always prep it up as not a wet noodle fight, but a bit of a boring lane. Top I expect lane, to see something different. Top lane is a lot more about how your jungler interacts with your lane, right? A lot of the champions we see in the meta aren't really like 1v1 savvy champions. Gangplank will always have a safe avenue to find gold. It's can Wei get back to the top lane and again, really start pushing Xiaobai's advantage which would be very uncharacteristic of E-Star and show another dimension of their play. Yeah, how do they influence top lane and what are they going to do about bot? Because remember, narrative is, it's always about the bottom lane here. It's very RNG-esque for Wink and Chelsea because of the attention that comes through and how does the 2v2 you are talking about before start influencing the bottom lane dives as well? Because remember that Kryon will have package available. Makes it easy to get down there and start pulling out Jin Jiao and Shinmo. Yeah, and this is what I don't like from BLG. We've never seen them consistently play around their bottom lane, which is where all of your setup is. Again, Chain of Corruption from Varus. Leona with all of the CC loaded into her kit. Can BLG pull off this style that we haven't seen them able to do before? And where does the Karma go? Because Fofo, if it's Package versus a Karma, well, she's going to be late to the party. But now Media spotted over a ward as he attempts to dive the bottom lane. Look at where Wei is. Nowhere nearby. Yeah, BLG just don't really look like they have the setup for this dive. So E-Star should be able to trade on the top side of the map and get a Herald out of it. Ooh, we are going back and forth. Okay. E-Star well, get out. Wink, hang on. Here comes Ragnarok. The Vikings end, it seems, as the ult comes through. Oh. Death Charge and the burst. Continuing forward into that doesn't work out, and they even get the Gangplank on the top side of the map. Now, Herald is available, as you mentioned, even though BLG are trying to zone them and proxy them from this wave. BLG did not have the setup to go for that dive. They didn't really have a wave built up. They weren't in position to follow through with Fofo. And this is one of the things in League of Legends that hurts you most. When you lose, not only on your weak side, but also on your strong side. E-Star come out with everything. BLG, they get they get some plates. And that kill that went over, it went to the Renekton. We're having a quick look at it. Really nice kick there 
from way in the top lane. He's got Herald now, by the way. And he's got a wave that's about to be pushed by this Renekton. And I just love these decisive reactions coming out from both teams. Maybe BLG's aggression there wasn't perfectly executed, but still, we've seen both teams going back and forth with, okay, you're here, I'm going to the opposite side of the map, I'm going to execute. E-Star just coming out on top this game. It's been a big development this series. E started, e <laughs> E-Star started out really, really slow. They started out discoordinated, and their ability to read BLG wasn't there. And even though for game number two, it was a bit of a long slug, this has been the cleanest early game so far we've seen out of it. Yeah, especially this series. We haven't seen BLG E-Star be able to play this kind of controlled, slower style. Yeah. Again, playing around the top side of the map, something new, another, another tool in their toolkit, I would say. They need them. Because when bottom lane goes awry, we've seen and we've talked about massively how bad it can go and how e -Star's run out of options. This game showing you that Xiao Bai getting the attention can perform. He's 10 CS up in this lane, now has Blade of the Ruin King. And now that Wei's here with turret plates still available, King might just have to back away. First turret handedly going to E-Stars with no response from BLG. Yeah, very great play coming from E-Stars, setting King in behind. We talked about how he is one of the main focuses and main forces for BLG, thinking back to that game one with the Renekton. So putting down one of BLG's star players to find your advantage is really great play coming from E-Stars. Can there be a response here from BLG? Medium moves up to the top lane simply to help get the Herald. Bit of damage onto Wei, but that's just to negate the effect. Now for Fofo walking up, it's three versus two. And E-Stars just back away. They don't over push. They don't get greedy. A smart play from E-Stars. It's Jin, Mao, uh, Jin Zhao and Shinmo are just trying to find a response somewhere here for BLG. Yeah, but when you're laning against an Ezreal, it is very safe. It's going to be hard to find opportunities in any way. As the game goes longer and you have something like an Olaf that kind of wants to run full force into you, despite having the Karma Shield, the damage from the Ezreal and Corky is going to be huge for E-Star. Yeah, and Ezreal and Corky have had such decent laning faces. Now, decent used objectively here on Wink versus Jin Zhao. You notice that the virus is still 20 CS up in the lane. Which is expected. But the kill that Meteor gave before feels like we're at a pretty even lane state. I would agree. I, I feel like if you're E-Star right now, despite being 20 goal, twenty CS behind, you're pretty much even. Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. You feel great scaling up. Another thing about having double AD carry comp is you have so much pressure on objectives like dragons, towers. You can rush a Baron very well. So E-Star are set up for success in the long run. I will say the caveat to that is that Jin Zhao and Shinmo did push the turret to about three plates worth. Remember, we are in 10.5, so 160 gold once again per plate spread between the bottom lane duos. So as you can see there, close to Blade of the Ruin King here for BLG's bot. So it's not all bad news. There still is a significant amount of gold, but definitely not across the map, as you can see, East does. Still about 2,000 gold ahead. Yeah, and with talking about the, the turret changes in general, this patch is really going to start enabling top laners once they get ahead to kind of express their skill better. It is yep. much easier for melee champions to be able to take plates now. Plates are now worth more gold. So getting that snowball started as a good top laner is much easier and much more beneficial. But you can see why it's a bit of a skill expression this game at least for Xiao Bai. Set up for success once again. For the damage there onto Wink. Now, reason we are looking heavily at the bottom lane is because Wei's down here and ready to engage. Xiao Si forces a flash out of Jin Zhao. Bit of poke coming through. But now the flash off of the AD carry, Ping's getting spammed here by E-Stars to start up this dragon. I absolutely love how decisive Chelsea oh, is. Dredge line, you talk about decisive, everyone's here from E-Star with a beautiful kick flash from Wei. He might be caught out as the damage coming back does kill him in the end. Means Jin Zhao survives as Meteor has to pop the ulti, but another beautiful dredge line onto King and they look to poke him down. And Fofo, late to the party, has to put his hands in the air and say, what happened? Yeah, E-Star coming up massive once again, despite Wei falling down on the back end. E-Star are all pretty healthy, but wow. this is still going. Karma Mantra Q does the burst damage, and Meteor follows up, but he will trade one for one. Sloppy as all hell as Xiao Bai looks for the follow-up onto Fofo, while Jin Zhao is getting 1v1 with the help of the Corky. Flash forward from Wink with the auto to get the kill. What is going on this this game? Just like the last game, these team fights are pure chaos. They're not even really team fights. They're just more like... 
Mantra oh. in a fire once again. The flash ball puts the flash away. Crying with perfect timing. The solar flare to come through. But Fofo gets nuked again. Stop giving kills to Wink. He's already got four of them. It just doesn't end. Every time we think we're moving on to the next play, another challenger comes in. BLG are like, let's keep testing the limit, but every single time, E-Stars are coming out ahead. Now, you may be able to force them out to get the dragon, but E-Stars are going to reset. They got so much gold from that fight. Yeah, we look at it, Renekton, <laughs> 560 turret plates. You do have a lot of turret plate gold going onto the bot lane of BLG, but uh -huh. with all of these flashes and summoner spells going down from BLG, it's gonna be you're going to feel really good as a 4-0 Ezreal kiting out these team fights. He went back and he picked up the Manamune and Iceborne after that fight, like pure gold into his pocket. Wink's feeling pretty good. We're going to see a carry Ezreal game. We've also seen that Kryon was able to pick up the Trinity Force before that fight went back after it and picked up a BF sword as well. Yeah, we see we see a 16 minute two item Ezreal and a 16 minute one and a half item Corky. Yeah. That like explains the game for you, doesn't it? Late game is coming at like 22 minutes. That's right, but can Wink survive this engage? I mean, it's pretty crucial. Arcane Shift away, has to cleanse away for the movement speed, but he's still alive. Here comes the True Shop Raj, as now the Renekton's TP'd in. Solar Flare a little bit too late as E-Stars converge down. Fofo left in the middle once again, as Crying is so damn big. Almost kills Meteor. E-Stars are really pushing the limit. Everyone on East are doing their job. Xiao by disrupting the backline, Wink kiting out. Xiao Si looking for these aggressive engages. An amazing dragon rage coming out from Wei. We did just talk about this though. BLG has no summoner spells. It's so easy from East to just be able to kite out this fight as the Ezreal and then kind of turn around with the Renekton and find an easy engage. And we're not seeing game one or game two. We're seeing a much higher tempo game. And we're seeing that E-Stars know they have the better team fighting, know they have the better game. And are now 5,000 gold ahead at seven minutes. And look who got another kill in that last fight. Guess, guess, it was Wink. Yeah, and here we see BLG running into E-Star, but Wink able to just E out, get to safety, deal a lot of damage. And the huge TP coming in from Xiaobai, disrupting the back line. Yeah. And we just see how much damage this Corky and Ezreal do. We're getting into Corky Azir meta ever so slowly. It would be nice to see Fofo on that Azir this game. Because we're getting into these fights where Fofo hasn't had the impact on this Karma mid. Let's be real. First part of the laning phase was decent. But from there, Krine is roaming faster. And E-Stars are better use, utilizing this mid laner in what seems to be another 5v5 on the horizon. Yeah, both teams posturing for this Rift Herald. You, you do have some summoner spells down from both teams, but Never East mind. are way ahead. Yeah, dredge line, Wink still hitting from the back here. King and not really in the fight, trying to position. But there's the package right down the middle. Crying has burnt everybody. Call it now. That's game over. <laughs> yeah, that's game over. BLG were the aggressors in that exchange. They were the ones saying, hey, we're going to take this Rift Herald. You come into us and we just see the damage disparity in that team fight. That was the best package I have seen. And I get Jing Dong packages here every day. E-Stars are just all over BLG this game and King and knows that he has to leave mid because E-Stars want more gold. And the surprising thing from this team this split is again, how you come with so many rookies, but your, indiv your individual talent is that of a top LPL team in your first split, in your first, in your first two months. This is the same story that we had with Sino Dragon last year as well, where they enter the league and suddenly they're just this big driving force that no one can really stop. East Stars have come into fruition in this third game, and we're about to see this beauty again. And we just see BLG again be the aggressor, but a great wow. package coming out from Crying. Look at the damage he does to Olaf, even just with one auto. He got healed twice there as well. And now you're just sandwiched in on the side of BLG, way coming in with the Dragon's Rage as Nautilus hits the dredge line, so it was a pretty funny interaction. <laughs> I, I love that. I also love that Harold decided to join and just see, well, I'm not going anywhere near that one. Crying picks up two kills, 306 in the mid lane, 503 in the bottom lane. The Renekton partied earlier on, 304 in his lane as well. So, E Stars, this is the look that has consistently been getting them wins. 
Maybe not in the early game with the top side. I know it's a different story. But the consistency with fighting is my point. Where E-Stars do it over and over again. And the big word for E-Star to me is relentless, right? When when we see E-Star at their best, we see relentless aggression. We see Shaoxi just out of nowhere, flash dredge lining and not yep. no fear going for these plays. Confidence from the support that has now moved his way into the LPL. Most MVPs, too. That's right. For support. Well, well, does, well either way, I'd be happy to give it to him for the... Most MVPs in the league, because Shaoxi has been really consistent. Stone plate now on this Nautilus as well. By the way, Cutlass here for Wink. Crying has an infinity edge. Two items on the top lane, Renekton and Xiao Bai. There's a Black Cleaver also on way. They've hit part of their late game early, and you can see the gold graph on the left. Crying's at 9,000 gold at 20 minutes. It looks like the, the three carries from Eastar have the combined gold of the rest of BLG. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> And this game's just fallen by the wayside. What can BLG do? 7,000 disparity. Nothing. And another Rift Herald, this time on an inner turret in the, in the bottom line. Yeah, them just dropping Rift Herald, able to take this turret easily. BLG have no options, way jumping in. 2v4, we see a dredge line, way just solo kills. Jin Zhao, the ultimate alpha move from E-Star's jungler. Yeah, I mean, this whole game has just been the ultimate alpha game, right? Yeah. You just ask, well, what can BLG do? How can they get back in this game? And Shaoxi, no fear, as you said. He's going to go in maybe a bit too far, but he survived with the stone plate. Wei comes in to help out his support, and Shaoxi lives. Cannon Barrage does absolutely no damage, and he starts get the turret anyway. Relentless aggression were the words we just used, and that is what we are seeing this game. Cleanest play of the series, and we get the form of E-Stars we want. 21 minutes in, look at the inner turrets, all broken bar the top lane. As, you know what, King is probably dead. Dominus, way to the Ruin King, and a Corky. Goodbye. There, there was never any chance you would even hurt E-Stars. I can understand King and thought process there. Dragon's about to come up. You assume both of them have recalled and spent their gold to, you know, hit another power spike. But that's not how E-Star rolls. We see a beautiful sonic wave coming out from way. Into the base. It just... Oh, <laughs> just very easy follow-up damage. Really nice stuff there. Clean execution has been the name of the game so far. And we've got a Dragon up, but we've also got a Baron up. E-Stars are right in front of this Dragon. There's no way BLG can contest if they come out of their base. They will die at this point in time, as we saw with Kick. We see Kryon has two of the most expensive items in the game, while yep. Fofo has two of the least expensive items in the game. He's got a gold point. difference of almost 3,000 against Fofo. I mean, it. just great play this game. I mean, yeah. seeing s this is what we wanted to see from E-Stars. We talked about Bloody. We see 17 kills at 22 minutes. Yeah. This is the E-Star we know. And it's, not that, it's not that BLG wanted to play at Bloody. BLG were like, okay, we need to look for options this game. And while we are seeing up the hype of E-Star, what looks like a dead series for BLG, we have to start talking about not what BLG can do, but what happened this game for BLG. There's, no, we're not going to get time. Way might be caught out. Thumbs up here from Shinmo for some reason. Shaoxi going to go in anyway. One versus five. The stone plate is here. He pops it now. The corky packages from Kryon have been exceptional. Delivery to come through. And BLG say, we didn't order that. Send it back. 23 minutes in, and it looks like we've already had the game-ending team fight. He starts pushing through the base with what could be one of the quickest games forward. This was like watching IG and V5 go head to head, but it's Easter, the brand new team in the league that they won't end it now. They'll play with their food a little bit longer. Yeah, and a great thing is we set up this series is E-Star have to prove themselves that they can consistently beat these teams that are ranked under them, show that they are a true top team and they're delivering. Game one was a bit messy, but game one, Kind of also is the BLG special of performing really well in one game yeah. and then... And then falling by the wayside. Yeah. I mean, I was just going to talk about it before where for BLG, they've got a three series curse. Teleport coming in though, Lyric. Now, Baron is going to go down and now you're in a bit of a pickle. Shinmo is going to be bursted out here by an Ezreal by himself. He starts already have two. It's double over to Crying. It's the burst from the True Shot Barrage. And Meteor watches with horror as Wink takes a double two. This time with Baron Buff. 
They're going to teleport in. BLG just ramming their head into E-Stars, and <laughs> E-Stars coming out on top. We see more aggression. Yeah, he doesn't want to let him back. That's the bullying we've come to expect. Wink is going to walk the wave in as Shousey has been a nuisance to Fofo. Look, the support's about to 1v1 the mid laner. Shousey pushes him off and E-Stars destroy BLG in game three to get another big series win.